Welcome here at this lovely day in the park in Amsterdam where people are enjoying the waterfront. Today I will reflect upon the co-creation cases that we have seen in Amsterdam and I will do that together with Huub in France. So we have seen this week in Amsterdam different cases of co-creation processes where citizens were involved and we've seen involvement in uh, innovative measurement techniques and in planning and design of the urban water system. So Frans, what can you say about that? Well, we've seen a lot, as a matter of fact, because the, 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 the citizens, the residents of Amsterdam are deeply involved in uh, the well-being in their own city and, and co-creating the livability of the city. Uh, they are involved in, in water quality monitoring, in the monitoring of the water levels, in, in creating awareness, uh, but also in um, planning their urban environment, uh, co-creating their urban environment. Uh, to enhance the livability of, of well, the, the, the direct well-being. So, Hup, what do you think about that? Yeah, so, the interesting thing of uh, managing the uh, urban water systems is that we now are moving uh, to a participatory uh, situation that citizens actively take part uh, of the management and the understanding but also the the monitoring for instance of all kind of uh, water related uh, issues but but yeah. i think it's more important yeah. to to see the, how much these citizens learn about their own environment yeah. the, the awareness of their own environment has increased and due to the increased awareness they are more capable of controlling the quality of their environment eh? both in terms of water yeah. quality flood protection and so on but uh, yeah, and in, in addition, if you involve them, for instance, as a data generator, uh, they actively contribute to uh, the understanding, the building of the understanding of the water system in the urban system. And if you then integrate that in all kind of new tools like uh, water apps or and so on, uh, then uh, the citizens is really thinking, okay, I contributed to this myself. And now look at this, this is really uh, creating new information, not only for my own environment, but also to other citizens. And they can become proud of that, so they create ownership. On the other hand, I think one of the most important challenges we are facing now is that water authorities and cities have to learn to deal with this information. How do we integrate that information that is generated by the public in the daily management activities. Yeah. <laughs> the attitude to listen uh, is an important attitude to be learned by, by the authorities, uh, so yeah. to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, it's the citizens think uh, by uh, participating from this is my water system. So if I uh, contribute to the uh, rain sensing or to the monitoring of the water quality uh, when you are uh, rowing your boat or uh, canoeing uh, in, in, uh, on the Amsterdam Canal and you participate then also by uh, generating information about the water quality and you see that back in uh, the management approaches that is done by the authorities and the other uh, stake stakeholders or organizations that are responsible for that. It becomes an owned and uh, together uh, form type of management. And this is different from uh, the uh, situations uh, of in the past that uh, citizens expected that the water should be clean or the water should be managed sure. or whatever and that it is not their role to contribute to that. This is now changing by their participation actually uh, as, a, as, a, as a citizen scientist in, uh, uh, in the management. And, yeah. it, it, it's also in their own interest. Huh? Uh, take for example the city swim. Huh? If you dive in a canal huh, the water well, quality of that yeah. canal is of extreme importance for to your own health. Yeah. Um, for that reason, it, it's easy to convince people to start monitoring that, that yeah. water quality. 
Same is uh, with wooden pile foundations here and, and groundwater levels and groundwater flood risk. Huh? If you, you see, don't want well, your Amsterdam house sink into the canal huh? not, because of that. Not, not only that, that <laughs> Amsterdam is built on wooden poles. Yeah, huh? yeah. So <laughs> having these poles uh, uh, underwater huh, while yeah. not being flooded by too high groundwater levels is an important thing. Yeah. So monitoring these groundwater levels yourself and, and yeah. keeping control yourself of the, on, of the groundwater level is an important aspect to be included in, in, in today's management. Yeah, completely agree. Yeah. <laughs> So what you say actually is that citizens, uh, citizen scientists can have different roles. So they can be some sort of data generators uh, by uh, helping with monitoring or uh, using the app to upload pictures of water nuisance. But there's more to it than just data generation. They are actually becoming aware of what's happening, the importance of management of the water system and maybe even the importance of having a role or taking a responsibility in managing the water themselves. And there's more, of course, to it than being involved in monitoring. Huh? We have seen this week that they also could be involved in planning, designing, maintaining the, wat maintaining the water system. Um, how about the questions when to involve stakeholders, whom to involve actually, and in what ways? <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, uh, as we have seen in, in, in the, the lectures, many, stakes, uh, many stakeholders are to be involved eh, because there's, there's, it's all a very multifunctional system, this urban system. Uh, um, so the question whom to involve is really, really important. And uh, in the traditional solution uh, uh, and, and way of working, we involved only the experts. Uh, experts often only related to one organization, the city. Uh, uh, um, Nowadays, we understand that it's also important to involve the citizens and, for example, also the businesses. Eh? Because economic activities yeah. and, and social well-being simply depend on the solutions that, uh, that are being selected. Moreover, uh, the citizens are to be receptive to the solutions we propose. Eh? Uh, they have to accept the solutions, eh? they, they have to, to, to be pleased by the solutions. It's their money, it's not our money as a city, it's their money that is being invested. We have to realize that. I think it's, it's even a, a bit more uh, than what France is saying. Eh? So, uh, so you want to, uh, stakeholders, you want to involve them and to have their, uh, um, educate them somehow, but you also want to create this uh, ownership. Eh? So this is important. But one of the most important thing is, I think, that uh, in nowadays water management, urban water management, you really actively involve the uh, stakeholders that are essential to bring in good ideas, because citizens can have very creative, uh, uh, important ideas that maybe some experts wouldn't think of, and these ideas are very important for the co-creation of a, a certain solution. Yeah, for instance, the the Lely, Lely Canal is an example of that, eh? so stakeholders involved. But also that case shows that it is very important not to forget about a certain part of the uh, stakeholders. So if you do that, we saw that in that case, that uh, a solution could be created that uh, was not completely perfect, <laughs> eh? to say it uh, mildly. Um, so a proper stakeholder analysis before you uh, start with the project and ID is very essential to really have in the picture all the essential stakeholders are there and then select out of these the most important ones that are key in uh, creating uh, solutions. So I think that's the lessons we've learned every day and we also try to show that in this course uh, the last uh, days and weeks. Yes. Yeah. What, what we see in the planning practice as well is, is that, that uh, the citizens also have very deep knowledge of the local conditions, better often than the people in the office. Eh? Yeah. So, so uh, bringing that knowledge to the table is essential to the co-creation yeah. process and really 
enhances the quality of the solutions uh, that are, uh, in the end are, uh, are being selected. Exactly. Any way of creating a dialogue with, with the, the local population and, and those who are directly involved brings in new knowledge about, about practicalities of the local situation. Soil, conditions, trees, uh, you, you, you name it, uh, what could hinder our solution. And, and often these people come with creative ideas, as you said, yeah. uh, p uh, ideas that we didn't think of in the office. Uh, yeah. And, and um, so, so that's a big advantage. Yeah, uh, so that's, that's important so to harvest these uh, ideas for uh, uh, the solutions you want to create. Uh, but another very important thing, if you don't involve them, you can also get, uh, how do you say, the resistance uh, uh, against all kinds of solutions and we've seen that of course in the past also very often uh, so uh, for the for the government and the, the, the real experts it's we, we, we have learned that there is in fact no other way than to go to the stakeholders involve them let them gain ownership in a certain uh, uh, project or a certain environment and then together with them create a uh, solution that then will be created in the future and that will then also be a sustainable solution. It will not die away because the people don't believe in it. No, it is owned by the people and it will stay there much longer. Yeah. So the classical form is the experts think this is the solution and we bring it to the stakeholders and they have to accept it. And this in 90% of all cases, at least here in Amsterdam, it's not working. Yeah. And, uh, and so the, the, the novel ways to do so is to go to these stakeholders, involve them, uh, let them all also contribute by co-creation processes and then integrate that into a planning and management and design approaches. So, what do you think? Uh, no, well, uh, yeah. the, the, I think it's important to, to in, really in, uh, involve these uh, people from the very beginning. Eh? Exactly. In particularly uh, in, in the very first phase, in the conceptual yeah. phase of planning. Eh? Uh, yeah. Because if you start planning and hey, you come in, in, in a, what, what they call a dialogue, uh, 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 design announce defense strategy, and uh, okay, so, so you have to defend your own uh, design yeah. towards the population. Eh? Rather, uh, we, we would like to have a dialogue, decide, deliver strategy. Eh? The dialogue first, uh, to, yeah. to harvest all these ideas, all these, uh, these, this local knowledge, bring that, integrate that with, with the solution strategy, and then you could come up with a decent design that really has, uh, has the support of all the local stakeholders uh, and is, is delivered yeah. in the end as a sustainable solution, as you said. Yeah, yeah. and if you, if you do it like that, eh, then you also know the, how do you say that, the promoting forces and the inhibiting forces in the uh, society. Uh, that, uh, so, and by better understanding that and by better uh, picturing that, you can also, uh, for the whole process, uh, get a much better uh, uh, approach an implementation approach, which stakeholders to involve in which step. So that depends on each case uh, and is always uh, different. Uh, but uh, by in early involvement of these stakeholders in the beginning, you can uh, have that picture much better. And in this way, you can make successful uh, projects, uh, for instance, in the water management in the city. Yeah. So. We have seen here in Amsterdam that citizens are co-creating the urban water system in many different ways. For example, as citizen scientists, but also in planning, designing and maintaining the urban waters. To make co-creation a success in this context, it is essential to think about whom to involve, when to involve them and how to do that. <laughs> 